Hey guys, T Server here, how are you doing today? So, the weekend just happened and we got to see YCS London. Very, very good event. Um, I didn't go to it because I've got obligations as a student, but um, a lot of people I knew went and um, from what I could see, um, it was a very good event. The coverage was fantastic. And what we have here is Marcelo, no, Marcello Barberi's Shadow deck and he won the YCS. Now, the YCS, um, the final, was a Artifact Shadow mirror match. Obviously, um, at this point in the format, you expect the format to get kind of stale with a lot of the same decks, and that's kind of what you'd expect. I mean, people just start to narrow down what, what is relevant, what's not. So, when you start to see mirror matches in the final, you, it's not a terrible thing. It's just, um, you have to look at the deck list to really get an idea of what they're thinking. So, um... Yeah, I personally like it. Like, I like this deck list. It's got some really interesting little things going on with it. Um, I got to watch a lot of the stream. Um, I was just kind of doing work, but at the same time paying attention to it. And um, I got to watch the final. And to be honest, it was a very interesting final because um, his opponent, Dominic something, I can't remember his second name, but um, he made this huge error in the first game um, where Barberi had uh, a mathematician and a artifact more attack um, in defense mode and um, uh, Dominic had a BLS on the field and he was about to draw for his turn and he had a Vanity's Emptiness. Now um, at this point um, the, the sensible play would have been to um, for Dominic to just attack through the monsters so because um, Barberi was very low on cards he had one card in hand I believe and he had one card on his field but it was assumed to be dead um, actually it turned out to be an artifact sanctum so um, Dominic's Vanity's Emptiness was actually cutting Barberi's outs off completely so if he just attacked through and then put pressure with BLS he would have one um, but Dominic decided to decide to, to turn off his emptiness by using Armageddon Knight's effect so he summoned it sent his monster to the graveyard and then um, as soon as that was done um, he sent a uh, dragon with his effect to target the back row and obviously um, uh, that triggered off Sanctum, which uh, destroyed the BLS. So he was left with an Armageddon Knight, and he didn't have a way to get over Moratek. So Moratek was just like coming back, you know, everything kind of swung back his way. So Barberi got very lucky because his opponent made huge errors. And that's basically how I saw it. He won quite luckily, but, you know, when you see that stuff in the final, it makes you cringe a little bit. So um, at one point, Barberi also uh, Black Rose the field, which is really interesting. Anyway, let's quickly go to the deck list. So we've got uh, one BLS, we've got three Beasts. And free more attack. There's obviously to kind of focus on a more rank 5e engine. Um, to focus on uh, using them for level 7s with uh, Falcon. Or Falco, sorry. Um, or making something like Volcosaurus, which he does have in his extra deck. And Durandal as well, which is a really great card. Um, two Dragon. Uh, most people play free. But, you know, if you play two... You're good. You're still good. You still get to deal with uh, Eva Swarms. You still get to deal with a lot of back row. You can do lots of cool stuff like that. Um, Shadow Lizard, of course. Or oh, Squamata. Um, you still... You still kind of run one because it's not that good of a card. But you run it anyway because it's a target for Falco. Um, if you go straight Mathematician, send Squamata, send Falco. Uh, get the Falco back. So now you've got a, you got a target, basically. Uh, Felice is a really decent card. Um, of course, running one, you will see it dead. But um, when it does go off, it's a very powerful combo. And I love it. And I have made a video, if you want to look on my channel, um, of Felice and Mathematician putting in work. And you can see three cards in his extra deck, which he uses frequently with this combination. It's exactly the same three cards I use when I do it. So I can exactly see his point of view, and I can see why that facilitated his win at this YCS. Um, two, Hedgehog. Uh, Patrick Hoban, I'm um, not going to talk about him too much, because um, people he's, he's a controversial bloke. But um, Shadow Hedgehog is generally played at one, because you don't want to see it past turn one. Um, but he runs two, and I guess it seemed to work for him, but running three would be completely stupid. So um, two is acceptable, clearly, because it won him a YCS, but, um, you know, the card is not that great. So he could easily cut it down and put something else in, and you probably wouldn't see too much of a difference. Um, a Law of Darkness still puts in hell of a lot of work. He's got tons of targets. You know, when you've got three beasts in your hand, you want a Law and get one of them out. So that's fine. You know, you can't complain with that. Uh, free Shadow Fusion, of course. One Foolish Burial, one Super Poly because it's at one. I'm going to go straight to the traps. We've got the free Artifact Sanctum, um, which put in a lot of work. But, of course, um, a lot of Vancey's Emptiness was being played 
this weekend. Uh, a lot of trap style, a lot of wide taps, and so on, so on. Uh, burst reverse, uh, pay 2000, special summon one um, monster in your graveyard, and put it in face down defense position. So on your end phase, you can special summon anything you want, and then you can go off. So beast becomes a plus one. Uh, Hedgehog lets you get a Shadow Fusion or Shadow Core. So you can pretty much get anything you want and you can start just going off from there. So you can cater what you want to get. So there's a lot of really decent cards with it. I used to use it in Raccoons, but um, this deck probably abuses it much more effectively. This is why he plays uh, more than one Falco, so I get that. Um, Trap Stun, wow, like I saw in the streams, I saw Trap Stun going so hard over the weekend. It's unbelievable. It works so hard against Emptiness, it turns it off. Vanity's Emptiness gets turned off during your turn when you have Trap Stun, and then when you've done your plays, you finish, and then they draw for their turn, and they have to turn it off themselves. If they do not have a way to turn off their own Emptiness, then you win because they they're of their Emptiness. So they kill themselves off in the process. You know, it was like if this card was around while Royal Oppression was around, then you would have seen a lot more of this card being in play because it just completely changes everything. It it puts your opponent at disadvantage. It's such a powerful card right now. And that's why he has two extra ones in his uh, side deck. So quickly speed this up. So we've got uh, three Shadow Games, uh, two Breakthrough Skill, which he says in his deck profile, um, if you want to check out Lithium's channel, that um, this card was MVP, which is kind of true because it's very, very good, this format. Uh, compulsory, obligatory. Um, we got Stoll Core, which is uh, put in a lot of work, but of course, when it gets trap stunned, if it's on the field, um, it goes back into the spell and trap card zone, and it's pretty ineffectual at that point. It doesn't even, it doesn't even get reset, so it just stays there, face up, and it's nothing you can do about it. Um, you got two Vanity's Emptiness, kind of a given. Uh, one wire tap deals with um, wire tap fights. You kind of want to have one wire tap. Um, in case they wire tap your trap stun, so you want to make sure the trap stun goes through. And Solemn Warning, because Solemn Warning is always going to be a good card. Um, for the extra day, we've got three Nephilim, or Construct, uh, two uh, Winda. So you can see that more people are focusing on the Construct variant, which is kind of obvious. Uh, we've got one Leo, which kind of puts it work sometimes, but it depends solely on what you're playing against. I think against Burning Abyss, this card... Um, Basically goes in really hard against uh, Phoenix Wing Blast, Raigeki Break, uh, Constellar Palades, um, all that other really good stuff. So it's a good, it's got a place in the extra deck if you can make it often. Um, we got the Michael, the Black Rose, and the Arcanite. You can make it with any uh, Falco and any level five. You can make it with Mathematician and Felice. Um, so that's why I use the exact combination: Michael, Black Rose, Arcanite. You actually do you it it, it targets a specific area of of the game state in its own way so you can if you need to get immense advantage quick black rose does it if you want to banish something michael does it if you want to uh use your level seven for something else then arcanite is that guy um he he didn't really specify much on his goyo but he just has it in there but i don't know if it put in too much work uh Amadis is great just in general um volcasaurus is used with the uh more attack and beast um which is really really cool use of Amadis as well and guy dragon just steals games from there because, you know, it's quite a lot of damage if you can kill something like a Construct and then just make Dragon Char Thunder Charger and attack for like 5-6. It's so dumb. Um, Artifact Durandal, really fantastic card. And Exiton Knight is his only rank 4 because he doesn't really need to go into it. He's only got Dragon and Lizard and Felice as targets. So he won't need it unless he needs to make a blowout. But that's it. So um, the side deck is pretty decent. Um, I really like it. You can see here you've got like Monarch Storm Force with Riser. You've got a Raigeki. You've got two Raikou, which is questionable, but he didn't really understand it either. Uh, Mind Control, two MST, Defusion, Malevolent Catastrophe. It's all really decent stuff for this format. You know, the format's going to change very soon. So this is going to be the last time or one of the last times that we're going to see this kind of deck in, in the game because it'll be a lot more catering towards um, a lot more back row hate to deal with Cleefort Tool. So that would be cool. And um, yeah, so overall, I think it's a really decent deck list. He really thought about it, but it's pretty bog standard and some in pretty much 90% of it is standard. So um, I just like these little things like that. Rank five plays, that's all really cool. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. And if you want to check out his actual profile, uh, go on to Lithium's channel. Um, look up Lithium Barbarian on YouTube or something and you'll be able to find it. So just go on there and look it up and you'll be good. So thanks for watching guys and hope to catch you guys in a few days. So thanks for watching and until next time, the Teach Tea Lover is out.